Today we will talk about internal forces in open frames. We will show how to draw the bending, shear and normal diagrams for the shown open frame. But before we do that, we need to clarify some issues. First, what is an open frame? If an open frame is cut at any point, the frame is divided into two separate parts, and thus we can easily evaluate the internal forces at the point. In contrast, if we cut the closed frame at a point, the frame cannot be divided into two separate parts and we are unable to evaluate the internal forces. We will show how to solve a closed frame example in another lecture. Another important issue when drawing internal force diagrams of frames has to do with the way we look at the frame elements. For horizontal elements, we always look at the element from the bottom and therefore the left and right directions are easily identified as shown. For vertical elements, the direction of sight is not always unique. Take the vertical element BF as an example. If we looked at the element from the inside, the bottom of the element will be in the inside. The left direction will be at the upper end and the right direction will be at the lower end. If we changed our position and looked at the element from the outside, all the directions will be reversed. Because the directions are especially important for the sign convention and the way we draw the internal force diagrams, it is important to clearly identify the way we are looking at the different frame elements. Therefore, we usually draw a dashed line as shown beside each frame element to indicate the way we look at the element. The dashed line indicates the bottom side of the element. Now let us work on the open frame example. As always, the first step is to evaluate the reactions. For detailed explanation about the actions and how to evaluate them, refer to the lectures on reactions listed in the description. The easiest way to draw the internal force diagrams for a frame is to divide the frame into a series of beams. Then we will proceed to construct the internal force diagrams the same way we have done for beams. For our example, we'll cut the frame at points D and F to produce three beams, AD, DF, and FB. At point D, two internal forces, XD and YD, will appear, and no internal moment will exist because we are cutting through an intermediate hinge. At point F, two internal forces, XF and YF, and one internal moment, MF, will appear. We can evaluate these internal forces by applying the equilibrium equations on any of the cut parts. We will work first on beam AD. By applying the equation sigma x equals zero, we will find that xd equals four kilonewton. By applying sigma y equals zero, we will find that yd equals six kilonewton. Next, we will apply the equilibrium equations on part FB. By applying sigma x equals zero, we will find that xf equals four kilonewton. By applying sigma y equals zero, we will find that yf equals ten kilonewton. By taking the moment about point F, we will find that mf equals eight kilonewton meter. Now that we have evaluated all the internal forces, we will start to construct the internal force diagrams for the beams AD, DF, and FB. We will start by the beam AD. We will rotate the vertical beam to the horizontal position to facilitate the drawing of the diagrams. The direction of rotation of the beam should be such that the bottom of the beam is as indicated by the dashed line. Now we can start to draw the internal force diagrams as we do for any beam. By evaluating the internal forces at key critical points, then we connect between the points to finalize the diagrams. The internal forces at a point can be evaluated by dividing the beam into two parts at that point and using one of the parts to calculate the internal forces. 
We are free to use the left or the right part, but take care that the sign convention for the left part is opposite to that of the right part. For detailed examples on evaluating the internal force diagrams of beams, refer to the lectures on beams listed in the description. We will start by the point just to the right of point A. Then the points on the left and right of point C, and finally the point on the left of point D. After drawing the internal force diagrams, we can now rotate the beam back to its original vertical position. Next, we will draw the internal force diagrams for the beam DF. We will start by the point just to the right of point D, then we will work on the points on the left and right of point E, and finally the point on the left of point F. We should be careful when working on point E, because when we cut at point E, we will cut the uniform load as well. Therefore, only half the uniform load should be used when evaluating the internal forces at point E. Finally, we will draw the internal force diagrams for the beam FB. We will rotate the beam to the horizontal position to facilitate the drawing of the diagrams. As before, the direction of rotation of the beam should be such that the bottom of the beam is as indicated by the dashed line. We will start by the point just to the right of point F, and then we will work the point on the left of point B. After drawing the internal force diagrams, we can now rotate the beam back to its original vertical position. Now the internal force diagrams have been drawn for all the beams which are the components of the frame. The final step is to assemble these diagrams together to construct the internal force diagrams for the frame as shown.